There's been a lot happening and we've been involved in so many different things. Some of us have been so involved in doing stuff to where we have just kicked Jesus to the curb. That's just gross negligence. And that's because everything is going great in our lives. But as soon as something happens, we're crawling back to him asking for mercy. You may say I'm giving time to him right now because it's Christmas. But in reality, it's all about you receiving a gift from someone so that you can receive something in return. So we need to ask ourselves, do I only have time for God when it's convenient for me? So let's analyze this as we flash back to a video that we filmed last year. Here's part three of the true Christmas story. In part three of our greatest gift series, we'll look at how God's gift handed to us was not very well received because we didn't have room. Wow. Hey troopers, it's Mr. J showing a love. Look, be sure to support my channel by hitting the like and subscribe button. Do we discount someone because they don't meet our expectations? Maybe because they don't look, speak, or fit into a certain status? They're just not worth our time or a spot in our hearts. Who gives you the right to devalue and give a thumbs down to an individual? Yeah, you think you're all that in the bag uh, of chips? Yes, we are, and I'll take over from here. But you might be turning away God's gift to you, which is what happened in this story. Let's flash back to Luke chapter 2 verses 1 through 7. Now in those days a decree went out from Caesar Augusta that a census be taken of all the inhabited earth. This was the first census taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone was on his way to register for the census, each to his own city. Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the city of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and the family of David, in order to register along with Mary, who was engaged to him and was with child. While they were there, the days were completed for her to give birth, and she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in cloths, and laid him in the manger, because there was no room for them in the end. Oh, it sounds so sweet to hear kids sing away in a manger. But a manger is actually a feeding trough to hold food for animals and generally placed inside of a stable. Now personally, if that was my wife and child, uh, no, that's about the nastiest. But Mary and Joseph humbled themselves to whatever elements they had to face because they understood what God's plan was and how they were a part of that plan. I'm actually ashamed we received God's gift to us in this manner. But you know, things haven't changed a bit. As Christians, how do you acknowledge He is your Lord and Savior, and yet you don't have space for Him in your schedule? Uh, do you have room for Jesus at this time? Oh, well, let me check my inventory and see what we have. Because the last time I checked, we were completely full. <coughs> the feet are reserved for areas they shouldn't go. <coughs> The hands are reserved for taking what's not mine. The tongue is filled with lying and cussing. And the head is reserved for stuff I can't even mention. So I'm full. Okay, what about your heart? No, 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 that's reserved for my VIP guest. It's a bit strange how you're about to lose your home or your child is acting out of control or some tragedy hits your household. And behold, you have acquired extra space. Are you saying there's nothing you can possibly do for me? Uh, okay, bye bye Delete, delete, and delete. Uh, excuse me, sir, we have space now. Let's look at this whole time thing from a different angle. Since God has given you the time, uh, can't he be a part of that which he has given you? Our time is like a ship that has acquired extra cargo, and we choose to throw the captain of our lives overboard to make space. Out of his love, God is amongst us, offering the greatest gift of all, and we don't have the time or space to receive what he's handing us. Now, if you really, really, really want to display Christ-like character, make sure Christ is a part of your daily schedule He'll manage your biological clock. Make sure he has a special place in your heart and he'll manage the toxic clutter that's poisoning your system. Jesus says, come to me, all ye who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, then I will enter his house and dine with him and he with me. 
Stay tuned as we bring to you part four next week. To support these episodes and what I'm doing, be sure to hit the like and subscribe button and turn on that notification bell so that you can receive alerts when new episodes are posted. And remember, always be sure to keep showing the love. Who knows, you might be entertaining an angel. I'm Mr. J. And Hold on before you leave this channel. This Thursday, we're gonna give you part four, the last of the four parts of the true Christmas story. Now, peace.